You see what's happening here, but you don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Jones? Uh, no, no, that was a bad joke. Sorry. Uh, back to the script. Uh, you see what's happening here. The good sex has to be in place first before it can be corrupted. Evil is parasitic on the good uh, for Augustine. There cannot be a lie unless there is first a truth. It is the truth, or whatever good, which is the, a positive thing. And evil is a lack in the positive thing, a privation. It is the uh, evil is in the less than, in the missing chunk. A missing chunk of a positive thing is not itself a positive thing. So thinking of evil as a privation of what ought to be in the good was one way Augustine addressed the problem of evil, one way and one way he solved the problem of evil. In addition to the problem of evil, Augustine also dealt with the cosmological argument, albeit indirectly. The last several books of the Confessions deals with the concept of time. What was God doing before he created the world? It is a question that uh, Augustine may have been asked. Augustine responds to this question by saying that he, that is God, was making hell for people who ask such questions. I think the implication here is that the idea of the creation of time, or the beginning of time, uh, by God is not incoherent. In any case, Augustine clearly perceives how complex the notion of time is, and with all due respect to Mr. Einstein, he perceived this way ahead of his, that is, Augustine's time. So Augustine was ahead of his time in thinking about time. And he, and, and he, Augustine, seems to try to apply these temporal reflections to the early chapters of Genesis. These last several chapters of the Confessions have always been puzzling. They seem out of place, so it's difficult to say precisely what Augustine was getting at uh, by talking about time uh, in the last few chapters. Uh, but that's one possible approach that he was saying uh, this, uh, our philosophical reflections on time uh, can help us to understand uh, Genesis and help us to deal with the problem of evil uh, in a more biblical way perhaps. At the very least, we may say that the Confessions as a whole are a masterpiece of literature, that they are very learned uh, writings of Augustine, and all of us should read the Confessions. Next, many people may not realize this, but Augustine actually coined the ontological argument. At least there is an Augustine ontological argument of sorts in his writing. The ontological argument did not first appear with Anselm then. Uh, so Anselm was, uh, I believe, about 1000 AD, Augustine about 400 AD. So this was over 500 years, well, about 600 years before uh, Anselm. Augustine had the, the seed of what would become the ontological argument. Perhaps the most important aspect of Augustine's apologetic work was his analogy of the sun, S-U-N, S-U-N, sun. Uh, this idea has been taken over by C.S. Lewis in more recent times. We don't look directly at the sun, but we know that there is a sun because we see all things by it. We could not see anything at all unless there was first a sun to illuminate it. And, of course, uh, the analogy breaks down because we can look at the sun itself, uh, but uh, we normally wouldn't do that uh, unprotected because then we'll go blind and that would be, that would be foolish. But, uh, as I said, we, we couldn't see anything at all unless there was first the sun to illuminate it. Uh, so we don't see the sun itself, we see things by the sun, uh, and we know indirectly that there is a sun. Uh, because we can see all things by it. Similarly, uh, Augustine says, we know all things that we do know 
because truth is illuminated by God. And the, in addition to the Confessions, uh, he wrote a very, very important work uh, in the history of um, Christian thought and in the history of philosophy of history, and that is the City of God. When the um, Roman Empire collapsed, uh, this was right around the time that, that Augustine was writing and being a bishop, the Roman Empire collapsed and some people were saying that the reason why Rome collapsed was because they had turned their backs on the pagan gods. And Augustine, in, in part, that's why he was writing uh, The City of God, the book The City of God, was to address that. Uh, and in this book, uh, Augustine speaks of two cities. There's the City of God on the one hand and the City of Man on the other. So uh, the City of God uh, is what uh, he would call the, uh, the invisible church, which is different from the visible church. Uh, so the invisible church is the community of all Christians, all followers of Christ, and they belong not to this world, but to the city of God, to God's kingdom. But the non-Christian, the unbeliever, the non-believer is not part of this family or this kingdom or this city, he's part of his own city, uh, which is this world. And the ideal place to be, uh, in the eyes of Augustine and other Christians, would be in the city of God. Now there's much, much more that we could, that we could say about uh, Augustine, but in the interest of time, I'll limit my, conclude, my concluding comments to pointing out the fact that Augustine's thought was heavily influenced by and based upon the thinking of Plato. In an earlier video, I talked about Platonism. Augustinianism is baptized Platonism, just like Thomism, as we'll see in a, in a later video, is baptized Aristotelianism. No discussion of Augustine is complete unless it admits, admits Augustine's debt to Plato. And uh, in the uh, Republic of Plato, which I just started reading, um, he talks about the, the sun uh, as, you know, illuminating um, things. So we, we see things by the sun, as Augustine says. It's also, you know, it was first in the Republic of Plato. Uh, so no discussion of Augustine is complete as I said, unless it admits Augustine's great debt to Plato and by extension to all of Western Christianity. Uh, all of Western Christianity has a great de debt to Plato through Augustine. I do not mean to say that Augustine had nothing new to contribute. I think Augustine had much to say that wasn't already there uh, in Plato. And while this exposition of Augustine is by no means complete, I cannot end it without at least mentioning that Augustinianism, Augustinianism is in large measure Platonism. Shalom out.